The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. Hello, and welcome to Health for a Lifetime. I'm your host, Don McIntosh, and we're delighted today to have Dr. Glenn Wilsey with us from South Dakota. He's practiced there many years as a physician and also as a consultant for the Black Hills Health and Education Center. Today, Dr. Wilsey, we're going to be talking about a very interesting subject, that is heart disease, how to have healthy hearts. And you know, the master physician said, I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Let me ask you a question, doctor. Do people live as abundantly or as long as they really should? They really don't. Research has shown us that today 70 to 80 percent of the people who have cancer could have been prevented from having those cancer by merely following a different lifestyle than they'd been following. Almost 100 percent of the heart deaths could have been prevented by a, posit by a different lifestyle. Mm. In fact, there was a, a doctor from Harvard University in charge of a health study at Framingham, Massachusetts, and he made this statement that uh, practically, that, that heart disease is a preventable disease and that practically no one really needs to die of heart disease. And that, that even people, we all have to die sooner or later, mm -hmm. but uh, that death could be pre pre uh, put off or postponed for from three to 12 years, depending on the lifestyle that you're already following. If you've been on a real bad lifestyle by making changes, uh, statistics show us that a person's uh, death could be postponed for at least 12 years Is that right? just by making some changes in our lifestyle. So what we eat, what we eat, what we drink, whatever we do, if we looked at those types of things, uh, we could prevent most causes of, of death. That's exactly right. In fact, if we analyze that the real causes of death, we find that about almost 90 percent, between 80 and 90 percent of them are related to lifestyle and that changes in our lifestyle could prevent those things like diet, smoking, the use of alcohol, exposure to sunlight, um, the occupation that we choose which could be changed. Mm -hmm. There are a few things, air pollution, individually we can't do much about that but as a population we something could. can be done about that as well. Food additives, we can choose, re learn to be label readers, and uh, choose the foods that don't have the additives that we know are harmful. So we're talking about choice. We're talking about that frontal lobe of our brain, using it and making the right choices. What are the leading causes of death, say, here in America? Well, I, I guess most everybody knows that heart disease is the number one cause of death in America today. About 50% of the people in America who die, and we all die sooner or later, die of heart disease. <clears throat> the various uh, Estimates have been made uh, anywhere from 500,000 to 700,000 people die of heart disease every year. Mm. Cancer is the next most common, about 500,000 people die of that each year. Then following that we have things like strokes, uh, about around 150,000 people die of that each year. And on down to lesser things like uh, uh, emphysema, which is re definitely related to smoking, about 85,000 people die of that each year. Diabetes, around almost 50,000. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these uh, are diseases that something could be done about either preventing or delaying. Mm -hmm. um, we've had, at the Black Hill Center, we've had an interesting experience, for instance, with diabetes. Mm -hmm. We've had diabetics come there taking insulin, uh, taking diabetic tablets by getting on an exercise program, uh, starting on a, a change in their dietary pattern, and onto natural foods, these people are able to leave their many times completely off medication or at least medication markedly reduced and by continuing this lifestyle their life is going to be greatly prolonged. So they can just turn things around. You know, we're talking uh, more specifically I think today about heart disease. What's really happening there? What's really going on with heart disease? Well, in uh, heart disease in our country, in America alone, there are around a million people who have a heart attack every year. Mm -hmm. 
and about half of those people that have that heart attack will end up dying from it. And contrary to the previously held opinion, almost half of those are women. We used to think that heart disease was primarily a disease of men, but mm -hmm. women are afflicted with heart disease almost as commonly as men. It comes on a little later in life due to their hormone balance, but it does hit women sooner or later. Mm -hmm. And uh, hypertension, high blood pressure is another one. There are about 40 million people with high blood pressure in America today, and this is a major problem. A third of the people who have hypertension don't even realize that they have it. Silent killer. It's a silent killer. Mm -hmm. um, half of those who know they have it are on treatment, but about a third of those who are on treatment don't follow their treatment program properly, taking their medications and the lifestyle that they should follow. So we really need to, to do something about some of these things. Mm -hmm. Uh, the costs are another item, too. The costs for health care for these people who are afflicted by these diseases that come as a result of our aberrant lifestyle are really breaking our uh, health care budget uh, to bits. And especially probably now that the, a large balloon of people, the baby boomers, are, are nearing those ages, I would imagine. That's exactly right. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people are giving some serious study to our health care problem and how are we going to be able to afford to give appropriate health care to uh, people in our country as the years go along and we get older and more people afflicted with these diseases. Well, what about heart disease specifically? Why are we in the mess that we're in with that? What, uh, what really is happening? Uh, you know, we, thought we hear about sudden heart attacks. Is there any such thing as a sudden heart attack? Actually, there isn't. Uh, there was a doctor from the Mount Sinai Medical Center who made the statement that there's no such thing as a sudden heart attack. It takes years to develop it. Mm, so the event... The terminal event is sudden, okay. but the preparation for that has been going on for a long time beforehand. We might just look at risk factors uh, for a little bit and see what it is that really causes uh, people to develop heart disease. Heart Association has developed what they call four major risk factors, and all of those are in the left-hand column on the slide here that, is, that are preventable. Something can be done about them. They include elevated cholesterol, high blood pressure, smoking, and lack of exercise. These are the four major things. In addition to that, there's stress and diabetes and obesity. Mm -hmm. There are some things that cause heart attack that we can't do anything about. But we have found that if a person will follow a good lifestyle and control the factors which are controllable, it will go a long ways toward counteracting these non-treatable factors such as heredity and age and uh, gender uh, and the uh, fact that a person's had a heart attack before, before he learned how to live a better life. If you had to pick one of those elevated cholesterol, hypertension, tobacco, lack of exercise, you mentioned those. Which one would, you know, and you were doing all those. You said, well, I'm doing all those wrong. Which one would you pick first to change? Well, it would be a little hard to pick, number one. <laughs> I th but actually, the use of cigarettes is probably the, the number one. Maybe, maybe cholesterol would vie with it for first place. Uh, but those would be the two most important of those. Lack of exercise is important. Elevated cholesterol is important. High blood pressure is important. You can't change your age. You can't change your gender. You can't change uh, those types of things, but uh, you can make a decision about these others. You certainly can, and I think we should do that. We owe it to ourselves. Each one of us owes it to ourselves and to our families mm -hmm. to do something about it, not only to ourselves and our families, but to society in general. So underlying, you said that there's no such thing as a, as a sudden heart attack. There there are things that are underlying that maybe we could deal with that we're not dealing with. Uh, uh, what are some of those things, more specifically, that okay. we're not dealing with? Um, I mean, it, it doesn't knock on our doors. It's not saying, take care of me today. What are some of the things that we need to just really be thinking about? Okay. Well, why don't we zero in on hypertension, okay. high blood pressure? This is uh, one of the things that is so common. As I said, there are about 40 million hypertensives in America today. And uh, we need to do something about that. Uh, hypertension not only causes heart attack, not only is it one of its complications, but there are other things that, are, that occur as a result. Uh, kidney failure. And that's not uh, good. That's and, not fun at all, is and it? That's a very serious thing. Uh, strokes, uh, mm -hmm. another thing that occurs very commonly with hypertension, that the blood pressure is so high in the brain that it blows out a blood vessel. We have a hemorrhage in the brain. The person mm -hmm. has a stroke, and of course we know how devastating this is. And a thrombotic stroke, one that's caused by a clot, can be treated today. There are clot-dissolving medications, but the hemorrhage, yeah. we don't have any treatment for that. Once that blood is, is flowing freely in the brain, it's there. Yeah. And then in addition to that, there's the eye damage that comes as a result of high blood pressure, mm -hmm. retinal damage, so that persons lose their eyesight. 
And then the thing that I failed to put on the slide here is also congestive heart failure, mm -hmm. another thing that occurs. And when it occurs, it usually occurs as an acute situation. And I can recall seeing patients in my practice who had this. And it's serious and many times uh, untreatable, uncurable. Mm -hmm. um, how, how can we uh, prevent these, uh, these types of things? There are a number of things that a person can do to keep from getting hypertension. You cannot prevent every case, but by, by and large, hypertension is a preventable disease. A low-salt diet has been a traditional therapy for probably years. 40 yeah. years at least. Okay. When I was even in medical school longer ago than that, uh, that was taught as one of the things that we should do. Uh, number two, of course, we all should have an ideal weight, and hypertension is usually helped if, if a person is overweight by losing weight, although slender people do sometimes have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. But if a person is overweight and loses, it will help. Uh, Non-use of tobacco in any form is helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, nicotine is a, is a vasoconstrictor. It causes a constriction of the blood vessels and elevation of the pressure. Uh, alcohol, strangely enough, is also... Even though it's taken by some people as a sedative, it actually is associated with high blood pressure and increases the risk. Exercise, even though when a person is exercising, his pressure is higher, mm -hmm. the effect upon the circulation, effect upon the blood vessels, tends to be lowering of the blood pressure. So that's effect. Uh, mm -hmm. Another thing we should do, all of us should get an adequate amount of exercise, 20 mm -hmm. 30 minutes a day. In addition to that, a diet. A diet that's rich in grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, avoiding foods that have been processed by an animal and you're eating them secondhand. All of these things can help in preventing hypertension. So really, we talked about uh, hypertension. We talked about this because it under, it's an underlying cause or a silent cause for many people uh, of heart disease. Uh, what really causes heart dis-ease? <laughs> okay, uh, the basic... Uh, problem here is an elevation of blood cholesterol with precipitation of the cholesterol into the arteries of the uh, heart uh, and of the, all the arteries in the body, in fact, not just the heart. Uh, cholesterol is the basic ingredient. Then there's some other substances, calcium and fibrin and platelets. And that all goes into the arteries of the heart. That's right. And the other vessels in the body as well, the, br the brain, the kidneys, the peripheral vessels, all of these are affected by atherosclerosis. But the ones in the heart cause the heart attack. Uh, there's an interesting uh, story uh, that helps us to have insight as to what can happen to a group of people. There's a little island in the South Pacific called Nauru, mm -hmm. about seven or 8,000 population. For years, they lived a primitive culture, but they found that uh, it was a rich source of phosphate fertilizer deposited there by birds uh, on their migration flights. Over Someone else discovered century. that. Okay. And they, the Naruanians Nauru then... Uh, found that there was a market for this and they started selling these people became affluent they started importing things from uh, they got uh, fast food you know restaurants they, they got this they got that okay and before long their heart attack rate which had been practically nil when they were on the native uh, homegrown foods skyrocketed until it was even worse than it is in the United States and I think it's just an example of what can happen it's not the people uh, it's it's what we put into ourselves it's our lifestyle that really causes the heart attack that we have so, uh, you know, I've heard that story many places, not just Nehru, uh, which I, I hadn't heard of before I talked with you, but uh, I mean, other places around, around the world. Australia, just recently, uh, I was in, in Romania, and they just love things from the Western diet. Really a problem mm -hmm. is it leads to that building block of heart disease. We've been talking with Dr. Glenn Wilsey from South Dakota. He's a physician. He's a health educator. We've been talking about heart disease. We've been talking about what causes it, the underlying problems, hypertension. We found out that many of the things that we do, many of the ways we live, directly lead to, lead to heart disease, heart attacks. There's no such thing as a sudden heart attack. When we come back, we want to see how we can avoid this. We want to talk a little bit more about some real practical things and some good news as we end out the program. We hope that you'll join us. Have you found yourself wishing that you could shed a few pounds? Have you been on a diet for most of your life, but not found anything that will really keep the weight off? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, then we have a solution for you that works. Dr. Hans Deal and Dr. Eileen Luddington have written a marvelous booklet called Reversing Obesity Naturally, 
and we'd like to send it to you free of charge. Here's a medically sound approach successfully used by thousands who were able to eat more and lose weight permanently without feeling guilty or hungry through lifestyle medicine. Dr. Deal and Dr. Ludington have been featured on 3ABM, and in this booklet, they present a sensible approach to eating, nutrition, and lifestyle changes that can help you prevent heart disease, diabetes, and even cancer. Call or write today for your free copy of Reversing Obesity Naturally, and you could be on your way to a healthier, happier you. It's absolutely free of charge, so call or write today. Welcome back. We've been talking with Dr. Glenn Wilsey. We've been talking about heart disease. We've been talking about what causes it. We've been talking about what we can do to prevent it. And this uh, segment, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Doctor, you uh, were sharing some interesting research with me uh, about heart disease. There's a lot of epidemiologic studies been done to help us gather information. The epidemiologic study is one in which they study an entire group of people, find out what diseases they have, what they die of, what age they die of, and so forth. The first researcher on this was actually Dr. Ansel Keys of the University of Minnesota. That's probably been 40 or 50 years ago that he began studying different populations in different parts of the world mm -hmm. and uh, found that there was a relationship between lifestyle and a number of different diseases. And since that time, of course, we've had a large study in China, and the Chinese people make an ideal study group mm -hmm. because they don't tend to move around over the country as much as we do. They can take a group of people in a community, and they'll stay there. The same people will be there year after year after year. And then there's the Framingham study that was done in Boston under Harvard University with Dr. William Castelli. They got a tremendous amount of information there. And then the Mr. Fitz study was another large study. Um, the study of the Japanese people has also been very interesting because the Japanese tend to ha be rather homogeneous and uh, maintain a, a consistent lifestyle. And they've also, a lot of them, moved from their country to Hawaii and then over to the United States. And to notice the changes in the diseases that they have from the home country to Hawaii and then to the United States has been very interesting. And we find that as far as heart disease is concerned, there's a tremendous increase when they move to America and begin to adopt the American lifestyle. So, the, so they, don't have, they don't have the heart disease in their countries, in China and Japan and these places like we do here. Japan has about one-ninth of the heart disease that we have in America, and their diet contains only about one-fifth of the cholesterol that people in America tend to eat. Mm -hmm. Another interesting thing about it that's come out of these studies is that atherosclerosis, hardening the arteries, the underlying problem with heart disease, actually begins in childhood. Mm. And this was first really brought to the forefront during the Korean and then during the Vietnamese conflict when they did autopsies on our servicemen, a young fellow from 18 Looked to at their 25 hearts, years opened of age. Them up. Mm -hmm. They found out that they already had the early signs and early changes of atherosclerosis, whereas their counterparts, the Korean young people, the, the Vietnamese young men, they did autopsies on them after they had uh, died from accident or from gunshot, and they found their arteries were perfectly clean. Well, uh, tell me exactly what happens. You know, you, I, I worked with one of these men that actually was doing those autopsies once. Mm -hmm. He worked with me in a hospital I worked in, and he said, you know, they would cut open that, that artery and they would look at it. Uh, explain to us what does really happen in, in those arteries. Okay, well, I think we'll in introduce uh, a couple of uh, pictures here that will show some research work that was done uh, at the University of Oregon. Uh, the picture on the right uh, correction, the one on the left <laughs> shows the normal situation, whereas the red blood cells are coming along the capillary and they're flowing real nicely. There's a distance between them and they're just kind of... And when they come to that junction there okay. and have to go one way or the other, those capillaries are so small that the red cells have to go through single file. Okay. They, this doctor in Oregon took these, uh, this is on hamsters, laboratory animals, they gave them a meal of cream and then they looked at their red cells and the way they flowed afterwards, and that's in the picture on the right side of our screen. So the, ones, the one on the left no cream, and the one on the right's with cream. Right. Okay. And so we can see what's happened. The red cells have become sticky. This cream has made them so that they're just like they have glue on them. They come up to the uh, bifurcation in the capillary where they have to go through single file, and they can't make it because they're all stuck together. And if that capillary happened to be taking blood to your, the cartilage of your knee, for instance, or to, the, or to the muscle of your heart, it's just not getting the circulation that it should have. So is this a clot? It actually is not a clot because it does dissolve as the, as the fat is, uh, is absorbed and uh, taken out of the vessel. 
An interesting thing, though, that this work was followed up by a doctor in San Francisco who did the same type of experiment on uh, human beings in which they looked at the capillaries back in the back of the eye. Mm -hmm. and they found out that no matter what kind of a fatty meal they gave, it could be corn oil, it could be cream, it could be lard, it could be butter, uh, no matter what type of fat it was, any refined fat when they ate it caused the capillaries uh, to uh, be obstructed by these uh, red blood cells that stuck together. So it can even be healthy, quote unquote, fat. Right, that's exactly right. So okay. the conclusion that we get out of this is that we should avoid refined fats in our diet. Mm. That even so-called good fats can be harmful to us, especially when used in too large a quantities. And it's hard to know exactly how much too large a quantity really is. So probably the best thing is just to eat the sunflower seed, to eat the corn, uh, eat, the so eat the soybean. Uh, but not to use the refined product. I see. Uh, so once you have this, this problem of athero atherosclerosis, um, can, can, it, can you treat it? Can it be reversed? You really can. There's been a number of uh, researchers that have demonstrated definitely that it can be reversed. Uh, one of the first one of, th one of these <clears throat> that was uh, done on animals initially by a couple of doctors, Dr. Veselinovich Vesel and uh, Dr. Whistler, and they showed on animals that they fed them a high-fat diet, and then they put them on a so-called good diet, and we call it a good diet, mm -hmm. that the atherosclerosis that developed as a result of the bad diet actually was healed up. It was reversed, so that atherosclerosis is a reversible disease. And there are many others that have uh, demonstrated this as well. Um, one of the uh, most recent one of these is done by Dr. Dean Ornish, who is a professor of cardiology at the University of California in San Francisco. Okay. And he put his people, people who had had atherosclerosis, they had had angiograms where they take the x-rays uh, of the arteries of the heart. Put that dye in there mm -hmm. and then they, they exactly. look at it on the, on the x-ray. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. And they show the narrow, narrowing of the vessels. He put, took a group of these people and half of them he put on a diet that we would consider a good diet. It was a diet that about 10% of the calories were from fat. It had a lot of complex, unrefined carbohydrates. Uh, it had no simple sugars, uh, no caffeine. Uh, these people were also put on a program of exercise, and they had uh, a stress control programs and group therapy and so forth. And what happened is extremely interesting. At the end of one year on this program, Mm -hmm. uh, we found that the sten uh, artery stenosis which that means? they had, which is the narrowing, okay, the those narrowing. narrow stenosis. spots, that the people who were on this diet, their narrowing had decreased by 4%, whereas the other half of the people who were on the American Heart Association heart diet, theirs has actually gone up almost 3%. So there's something beyond what the American Heart Association is saying. They really need a lower okay. fat diet than what they have. Than Especially what if they, they have, have these problems. That's okay. exactly right. The angina decreased 91%. What's the angina? People. That's chest pain that okay. comes as a result of poor circulation of the All heart, right. the heart not getting enough. Uh, so 91% of them no longer had the chest pain. That's exactly right. Amazing. And the ones that were on the control diet, uh, theirs, theirs became worse. Also, their LDL, the bad cholesterol, went down on the, on the um, uh, diet that was uh, we call a good diet. The okay. ones that were on the control, theirs went up. So uh, the LDL, was that uh, some That's of the bad cholesterol. Lousy. That's, uh, that's right. L stands for lousy. <laughs> okay. That's right. And so it went down. All right. So th th this was an interesting thing. Now, uh, So what, this is really showing that you can not only uh, address the problem and stop it, you can even reverse it. Exactly right. And the interesting thing is that just uh, a few months ago in the Journal of the American Medical Association, uh, I read the report of a five-year follow-up. The first statistics I gave there were, the first, were uh, uh, one year. At the end of five years, the results were even better. There was less, uh, even less angina. And some of the people who were on the control group, the ones who were on the Heart Association diet, actually became so bad that they had to take them out of the study completely. Several of them have heart had heart attacks. And uh, they, uh, some of them were also put on lipid-lowering drugs that the Heart Association diet was not doing the trick. So after five years, we're seeing here that, this, that the, the narrowing went down, what did it say, seven? Uh, yes, the, 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 the narrowing went down almost 8%. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, chest the pain. angina, chest pain went down 72%. Their uh, LDL, the bad, the lousy cholesterol went down 20%. 
and their cholesterol was down 60 to this is over this is over That's five a years five year period I guess the so. important thing about this to me is you know some people will say well I could never change and I never could stick with this this is saying that people not only change for a momentary program mm -hmm. but they stick with it they did stay with it mm -hmm. uh, take some willpower take some dedication to take some commitment but these people who did do that found that it was uh, was uh, worthwhile for them so atherosclerosis is a reversible disease mm -hmm. uh, they're actually, I, might just, I might just quote the summary from Dr. Ornish's uh, uh, study that he did in the article in the Journal of the American Medical Association last December. He said, I'm quoting, okay. experimental patients showed even more regression of the coronary atherosclerosis after five years than one year. In other words, they got better. In contrast, patients following a more conventional lifestyle recommendation showed even more progression of the coronary atherosclerosis after five years than after one and had more than twice as many cardiac events. In other words, they were having more angina, more heart attacks, uh, more cardiac surgery. So that uh, the program that uh, with the refined diet just did, uh, even this though it made it worse. For it them. made it worse. That's but the right. simple diet, those things, we can reverse it. Yeah, that's right. Do you have any advice for us uh, uh, as, as we're closing out the program? We have two minutes left. People are saying, well, what can I do? Where can I, how can I start on this journey of reversing <laughs> heart disease? Okay. Well, we have one more graphic that we can do real quickly, I think, from Dr. Castelli from the uh, uh, Harvard study, a Framingham study in Boston. And he, he makes a statement that atherosclerosis is 100% reversible if we maintain a cholesterol level of 150 and 60% reversible at a cholesterol level of 170. Now, these are certainly attainable. It okay. takes some judicious effort, but it certainly can be done. And so how do we attain it? And so we attain that by starting to eat a diet that's heavy in unrefined foods, okay. grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables in their unrefined state. Don't add cytotoxins to, cytotoxins to them. Okay. Don't add a lot of fat to them. Don't add sugar to them. Uh, just use them in the way that uh, the Lord caused them to grow for us. Uh, we can prevent the heart disease if we will. We'll go ahead. We'll leave this slide on here and just real briefly go over. Low salt diet, maintain an ideal weight, avoid tobacco, get a regular exercise program 30 minutes a day, okay. and then eat that diet that I mentioned, a diet low, uh, low in refined products or avoiding fried pro products, grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables in the way that they grew, the way the Lord designed them for us to eat. Mm -hmm. So research is showing us what, uh, what we probably had a sneaking suspicion all along, that our mothers were right about saying eat our fruits and vegetables, but more than that, that the master physician was right when he said, hey, fruits nuts and grains. Uh, we have about 30 seconds. I want you to take 15 of that and say, is there anything we really should bypass? We should bypass the refrigerator, bypass McDonald's, bypass Pizza Hut, <laughs> uh, bypass Wednesdays, bypass the, the local greasy spoon. Leave those things alone. Go out to your garden and get your food. We've been talking with Dr. Glenn Wilsey from South Dakota where he works with the Black Hills Health and Education Center there. And we hope that as a result of this program, you will avoid heart disease, heart attacks, and have health that lasts for a lifetime.